Hey what's up guys, it's Nick with Indie Eagle, and today I will be showing you how to make a basic enemy for our platformer that we started yesterday. So the first thing we want to do is add in a sprite for the enemy. We'll just duplicate the player's sprite and go into edit mode and change him to red with the fill tool. This can be any color, I'm just going to use red so it will be easy to uh, tell the player and the enemy apart and click the check mark and go up to animation up here and flatten bottom now let's just type in say five for number of frames and as you can see it added in the sub images for him to flatten but we're just going to remove these three by clicking uh, on them and just pressing these scissors up here now we have two sub images one is him upright and the other one is him flattened. You'll see why we done this later on. Now just name him. And we're done with that, so going ahead and add in an object for him. Okay, now add in another object. Now this is just going to use the uh, grounds sprite because you're not even going to be able to see it in the game so it doesn't really matter what sprite you use for it. Now just check this little uh, visible right here so it will be invisible and click OK. Now, oh I forgot to name it, uh, OK. Now go into the object enemy. Now we'll program his AI. We'll create a new create event and set up some variables. Okay, so what this does is right equals true, left equals false, dead equals false, and image speed equals zero. So these two, the right and left variables, are going to be for movement. Dead is going to it's also going to deal with movement. It's just so if he's dead, he won't be able to move. And image speed, since it has two sub images, then normally it would just be switching back and forth between those two sub images at a very high speed. But we don't want him to animate at all, so we'll just set image speed to zero. Click OK and go into the step event. Okay, so what this does is it checks if dead, the variable dead equals false, then it goes on to this block of code. And what this does is if right equals true, then we'll move him right by a speed of 2. Else if left equals true, we mo we'll move him left at a speed of 2. But if dead equals true, it'll just ignore all of this right here. It'll it will just break the code and he will not do anything. So click OK and add in a new event and collision with object blocker. Okay, so if when it collisions with the blocker, if right equals true already, then it'll set right to false and left to true. But if left equals true already, then left equals false and right equals true. So that just sets up, uh, further sets up the variables so he'll, they'll change and everything, but step event is what really makes him move. And we'll add in one last event for the enemy. It's an alarm, alarm zero.
Now all instance destroy does is it destroys the object. That's all it does. So click OK. And we're done with the enemy. Now let's go into the player. And add in a, an event collision with object enemy. Okay, so what this does is when the player collisions with the enemy, if place meeting is at Y plus 32, then that would be the very bottom of the character, then it goes on to this block of code here. With other. What that means is, since two objects are being involved here, the player and the enemy, and in the player event we have a collision with enemy event, this is going to be set to the other object, in this case, object enemy. And this block of code will be applied to that enemy. So dead equals true, alarm zero equals 10, and action sprite set sprite enemy one zero. So dead equals true, you know what that does. And alarm zero equals 10. I don't think I've been over alarms before. So basically it's like a, a countdown. So this will be set to about probably around 10 milliseconds or somewhere around in there, you know, to the uh, uh, event alarm zero. That's why we set that up in the uh, enemy. So when 10 gets to, or zero gets to 10, or 10 gets to zero, however you want to look at it, then whatever was in the alarm zero event is applied. In this case, it's instance destroy, so the object will, the object enemy will disappear. An action sprite set. That is used to uh, set an object's sprite to something else, except in code instead of how we've been doing it. And this one is for the sub images. So since the second sub image is uh, a flattened sprite, then that's what he'll go to. And zero is for speed. We don't want that to be anything higher than zero. So after that, then V speed. This is applied to the character because it's no longer in with other. So that'll just make him bounce up in the air when he collisions with the top of the enemy. Now let's go on ahead and add in a little bit more code. Okay, and what that does is if you are not meeting the enemy at Y plus 32, then this isn't applied to the character or the enemy, so it goes on down to this, which is room restart. Now this is basically like, if your player dies, then the room is restarted, so you can play the level again. We won't have anything else in it right now because we don't have lives or anything like that set up, so that'll be fine for now. So click OK. And let's go into rooms now. So we already have this room set up. But I want to change it a little bit. So we'll change the width to say 900. That'll be fine for now. And uh, let's add in some stuff here. Okay, now we'll add in two enemies, right here and right here. Since the enemy doesn't have gravity set up, you want to make sure that it's right on top of the ground. And go to Object Blocker, and go down here to Delete Underline. So we can place an Object Blocker here, 
and here and then one up here and here now what the enemy is going to do is as soon as he hits the blocker he's going to go in the opposite direction so since it's right here since he's going to be going towards the ledge here we want the object blocker to be one block off of the ground because he'll get right here on this block and then he'll just go in the other direction if we put the blocker here then he'll change directions here and it'll just look a little weird so let's leave it like that now one last thing we want to do is set up a mask for the player so let's just uh, duplicate the player go into edit sprout and click this new uh, create new sprout button it's a blank sheet of paper and we'll just leave it 32 by 32 now just fill this with red and we'll name it sprout mask and go into objects and double click the ball and set the mask to that and now we're done so save and run your game now as you can see they'll move and as soon as they hit the blocker then they'll go in the other direction and we can jump on top of them here and they'll flatten and the player will kind of bounce up in the air but if we collision with the side of them then the room is restarted so that pretty much does it for basic enemies uh, maybe in the next tutorial uh, we'll go over um, maybe health, lives, and stuff like that by the time that we get through all of these tutorials though then you'll have a full platforming game You'll have lives, health, uh, checkpoints, teleports, you know, all that good stuff. So it'll be a full platforming game. So stay tuned for the rest of the tutorials and see you next time.